Welcome to the Happy Customer Channel. On this week's episode, we sit down with Staff Sergeant Sarah Ralph of the United States Marine Corps and discuss recruiting, marketing, and life in the Marines. Welcome back to the Happy Customer Channel. My name is Giacomo Puccini, and on today's episode, we have Staff Sergeant Sarah Ralph. She is with the United States Marine Corps, focusing on recruitment, what efforts they do, digital and in person, in order to help bring more people to learn about how to join and be part of the United States Marine Corps. This episode is brought to you by Buena Vista Creative, Miami's premier digital marketing agency. Visit BuenaVistaCreative.com for more info on how Buena Vista can help your business increase revenue and create the brand and digital presence it deserves. Video and podcast production, web and app development, search engine and social media marketing, logo creation, outdoor, print, swag, and more. Visit BuenaVistaCreative.com to learn more. Welcome. Today's episode of the Happy Customer Channel, we have Sarah Ralph, who is a staff sergeant, helping with recruiting for the U.S. Marine Corps. Welcome, Sarah. Tell us a little bit about what you do. Uh, so currently right now, I work in Quantico, Virginia. Uh, I'm called the Brand Awareness Chief, so I work on all of the commercials for the Marine Corps, and I go on content collections to gather for recruiting materials and stuff like that. So, Very cool. Yeah, it's not bad. So it's a lot about getting people engaged into the idea of the Marine Corps and what they do? Yes, and bringing a lot of like awareness. We do a lot of paid media with the content we get and social media and stuff like that. So just bringing imagery or video uh, products to life for people to view and have awareness of what the Marine Corps is about. Okay, and so I'm assuming this is a big shift or transition to how it used to be done in the past because of the technology, social media, would you say? Yes, yeah, I think it's a lot easier now in today's day and age to have awareness um, okay. or to bring awareness to things than it was back in the day, but it's definitely changed if you view older commercials to now. <laughs> That makes sense. And I'm assuming in the past they didn't have really a social media presence, right? No. How, how long has the social media presence been more of a focus? Uh, I'd say the big push for social media probably in the past like maybe 12 years. I think that there's just been a harsher push. And then now it's really all, um, I would say 50% of our eggs are in that basket for social media just because that's what everyone is into it these days, you know? That's true. Yeah. So from there, I'm assuming questions pop up and they're like, okay, I got a general idea of what I'm looking into, but I want to talk to a human. So at that point, they we were talking about a little bit earlier, they would call 1-800-MARINES, right? Yes. And when they call, what, what kind of happens at that point? Uh, so most of the times, um, people will kind of see things online or they, you know, see an ad or something of that nature. And I think it kind of generates some questions if they already have that interest in the back of their head about the Marine Corps. Okay. So they can call that number. Um, and it's kind of like a safe place to call because you're not having that, you know, face to face interaction. Um, so they'll, they'll make that call and they can ask general questions to some of the uh, call center agents if they're, you know, generalized questions. And then from there, they can kind of get pushed towards a recruiter who might be able to answer those a little bit more in depth. Perfect, okay, so that makes sense. So it's a call center, you have the agents answering and helping guide them through the experience. Because I know like the stigma, you watch some of these these movies and shows, it's essentially you have the uh, staff sergeant, or is, that's, is that very different than like the drill sergeant? Yes, yeah. I, so we you don't, don't call yell them as drill much. sergeants, but. <laughs> in the Marines, it's yeah. called different. Yeah, it's their drill instructors is most of what we call them. And then, yeah, after that, it's just by your rank. Okay. And uh, so on the staff sergeant side, that's more overseeing the overall scope of that specific project. Would that kind of, does that sound right? Or maybe you can help me understand. I think it's a group effort. I think everyone, whether you're an officer or you're enlisted, you do have your sole projects and you do have your, like, billet and responsibilities. But overall, I think we come together and kind of collaborate over each other when it comes to our different projects, you know? Okay, and then the call center falls under your overall scope of responsibilities? Uh, to an extent, yeah. I have a, there's a captain who is above me who kind of oversees it a little bit more and I'm just there to kind of assist where need be. Perfect, okay, so you keep it on course and moving yes. in the direction you <laughs> too, so you're helping maintain, a keeper of tradition and heritage, yes. I guess, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard that keyword earlier. So. <laughs> Remembering it. Perfect. And um, so these type of questions that people have, 
the the overall goal is to help them clarify it's a safe space because I like I was talking about the stigma before. There's been a lot of times where people feel like if I go and talk to someone in person, they have the recruitment centers. I remember from high school and college. Yeah. And you'd be worried if you walk in there, you're gonna come out, jump on the plane, and yeah. you're, you're you're enlisted and you're done. Yeah, I think we try to put like those fear at ease because there's nothing wrong with like having an interest and wanting to have questions answered. And I think we try to alleviate those fears for people that you can still come in and ask questions. Um, and maybe you just need to do it at your own pace and call someone first before you have that courage to go in and talk face to face. Because I promise no one's going to make you force like force you to sign a contract when you first go in. So That makes sense. And yeah. then on the phone, you've got a much safer environment because you're not signing anything or it's going to yeah, be a lot And you harder. can hang up anytime you want. So. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to have some self-control. To exactly. <laughs> But what are some of the type of questions or situations that happen during those conversations? I think sometimes um, a lot of it are general questions of like, hey, like, what? how long is boot camp? Um, how long would I have to go there? Uh, how long is basic training? Can I join if I have a tattoo here? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I had this health issue when I was a kid, but I don't have it anymore. Am I still going to be allowed to, you know, keep going with this? Um, I think things like those are most of the common questions that get asked. Uh, a lot of the time, I think there's some questions that are asked that are things that we don't expect call center agents to really understand or know. So we usually try to hope that they can push them and that person would be able to reach out to a recruiter or have the desire to go and continue that step to a recruiter. Okay, great. So when, when you say they may not understand, so these individuals in the call center don't have to be Marine Corps? No. No. Okay. I mean, we don't expect that. I think we look for someone who is enthusiastic, professional, and mature. And I think it would be nice if they kind of understood our brand, you know, so mm -hmm. that they can have that enthusiasm about it. Because I think once you understand the Marine Corps brand and what we are about, I think it kind of gives you a little bit more enthusiastic to share that information with other people. And, and I think sometimes when people work with certain companies, they have a better understanding. Or if you were part of the Marine, you're going to have a deeper understanding of what being a Marine is yeah. like. So how do you kind of bridge that gap when someone who is a call center agent has never really had the opportunity to be a Marine, but then they're helping support people who are trying to make that decision? Sorry, I want to think about this. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's a tough question. I, I t totally get it. So how do you instill the, the, cause the understanding? Is there, or how do you train someone to be a call center agent? I think sharing, I think sharing the Marine Corps message, and mm -hmm. I think more interactions with actual Marines, I think can b bridge that gap because uh, the Marine Corps is really big on camaraderie, really big on everyone who's fighting with us uh, and supporting us. Those are our family, whether you're a civilian or you're an active duty Marine. Um, so I think that bridging that gap, I think it would be more of like them understanding of like what our message truly is and like what we're about and then actually having interactions with actual Marines and getting that face to face time and not just representing a brand that they, you know, never really understood or met someone from. That makes sense. So they do have uh, interactions or conversations or how does that work for them to spend more time with? I think that's on our side to do. <laughs> uh, okay. That's with the people on the phone, you mean? Yeah. But what about the call center agents? Do they spend time with individuals in the Marine? I don't know, but I think that that's something we should look into. I think it would be beneficial for them and us because um, you can't expect somebody to do all this stuff for you or to push the message that, you know, and they've never actually even had those interactions yeah. before. So. They, they may not understand. That yeah. And, and especially when you work with someone who's been in it and done in it, uh, done it, they... Yeah, I think it just like brings a better understanding. Sure. So maybe something for the future to kind of push for. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, so what would be a measure of success for someone on the call center side? I think one, being able to answer the questions um, that are asked of them uh, to their best knowledge. Maybe not, you know, maybe they don't know everything, but to their best ability to be able to answer those. Um, and to be able to push that conversation towards a recruiter, I think that that would be successful. Okay. You know. So it's not like, hey, you gotta get ten people to sign up for day. No, okay. no, okay. they don't have you know a mission letter that they're obligated to fulfill. I think we just want someone who 
um, tries their best to answer them to mm -hmm. their best ability and then push that conversation towards a recruiter that's out on the streets. That makes sense. So it's more infor informative yeah. and uh, supportive, I'd say, in a sense, which is very cool. Yeah. Because it can be very daunting, I would assume, for a lot of people to make that decision. So having that support in a safe environment, that, that's very, very cool. Um, and what kind of led you to join the Marine Corps itself? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. I, uh, I really wanted to go to art school. Um, I'm a huge art nerd. Um, but I came from a family that's not very wealthy, so I couldn't afford school, you know, even with scholarships. So I already had a brother who was in the Marine Corps. He joined right out of high school. So I was hesitant to do it, but my dad uh, made an appointment for me with a recruiter <laughs> and told me to go sit down with them. So that's how it kind of happened for me. And once I met a recruiter, I was just like, no, I'm just going to try it. I genuinely didn't believe I was going to make it through boot camp. I really? Yeah, as soon as I got on the bus, I was like sitting there, I was like, I was like, why did I do this? <laughs> I was like, this wasn't a good idea. <laughs> um, but I've been in for almost nine years. Wow. So, so um, I don't regret it at all. And I love my job because it is artistically related, you know. I came mm -hmm. in as a photographer and a graphic designer mm -hmm. for the Marine Corps. Um, and I've transitioned to work on commercials and millions of dollars worth of productions and stuff. So That's super cool. Yeah. Very, very interesting transition <laughs> that you can do so much in such... Such a unique space as well. Yeah. And then with the, so so you've got a lot of different components that goes on. So you have the call center is a component of it. You have the creating the content. Mm -hmm. um, commercials, I'm assuming, is television, right? Uh, television, broadcast, um, out-of-home out media, things of that nature. Okay. Yeah, PSAs. Perfect. And then you also do all the social media yeah. management as well mm -hmm. and content. Yeah, that's my baby, social, social media. media. Yeah. That's perfect. And it's good that they have younger demographics doing that because some yes. of the guys who've been there longer probably wouldn't understand it. It shows when other people hire than me, review things, and they're like, I don't really like that. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> is Is your goal with some of the digital content to go viral? I think now, no. I think it's just more about bringing awareness. I think it'd be awesome if some of our content, you know, went viral. I think maybe when I was a younger Marine and I put my own, pr like, products out there that I made, I'd be like, yes, I want this to be viral. <laughs> um, like, I had a photo that I took. It was in the Marine Corps Museum, and I thought it was, like, I thought I won an Emmy. So. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty <laughs> impressive, though. So you're, you've got, you're already in the Marine Corps Museum. Very yeah. cool. That is cool. That is very cool. I took cool. a photo next to my photo, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's very cool. Do you, do you feel, because um, I didn't really think about it that way. I know lots of times when people look at anything military related, mm -hmm. it's, it's like U.S. Army, uh, Marine Corps, you know, whatever. They probably just, Air Force, they probably clump them together and they don't realize that they're different branches. Yeah. Do you feel there is any competition between one branch of the armed forces or versus another? Uh, to an extent, yes. Um, but at the same time, like, uh, we just, I think Marines are just different. I would never say anything bad about another branch because we're all fighting the same fight, you know? Mm -hmm. We just all have different roles. Like, Army is really more ground-based units. Navy is more in the sea. Air Force is in the sky. The Marine Corps is just different because we're in all of those different, I'm sorry, we're in all of those different sections. Um, but we... We don't offer bonuses to an extent. I know that's a huge controversy now just because that's something that um, every branch is offering. But the Marine Corps' message is like, we don't offer you um, this solid time. Like, we tell you straight up, and we're very straightforward about who we are and what we're about. It's going to be hard. It's going to be challenging. We don't promise you a rose garden. And our message and our brand has stayed the same consistently um, the entire time the Marine Corps has been established. Like, if you think that you're up for the challenge, come talk to us. We're not trying to actively get you because we think that, like, every single person in, you know, in the Gen Z era is going to be great for the Marine Corps. We want you to want to be challenged. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's what we're about. So I don't necessarily think we're in competition with each other. I think it's just, like, we're just different. Um, yeah. That makes sense. And is there a lot of people, because I, I know when you watch movies and stuff, you got Top Gun, that's really Air Force. You got uh, certain movies that are based off, um, you know, the Navy SEALs yeah. or, or Army Rangers or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, 
do you feel that certain insight or seeing those type of uh, movies, might we say, drive people to go to one specific branch versus another? Yeah. I, I mean, I think that any type of movie um, can provide you some type of idea in your head that that's what you want to do. Yeah. Um, like, there's a, docu there's a lot of documentaries out there, too. Um, I had a good friend who watched the Battle of Marja, which is a really good documentary about the Marine Corps when we were in Marja. And, like, I've known people who wanted to go into the Marine Corps because they watched that. Or, I mean, even events in life, like a lot of people joined the military after 9-11 happened. Um, so I think anything can kind of flick that little fire in you and want you to kind of go towards that one thing. That makes sense. And, and sometimes the biggest challenge is to get the name out there and get it in front of people so that way they know it exists and yeah. have a better understanding of what it is, right? Yeah, because there's... I think the biggest conflict uh, is that everyone watching these movies in Hollywood or like any of these things is like everyone thinks that we are guns blazing and all we do is war, war, war. And it's really not like that. Like, I mean, I've been on a few different field exercises and I've visited other countries and stuff like that, but I don't know. I've never experienced it where I feel like I'm about to pack my go bag and take off somewhere. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's just... I don't know. Sometimes there's just a lot of like contradictions out there, and it's better to hear word from mouth from someone, um, mm -hmm. whether that be a call center agent or something like a recruiter, just about what the actual facts are out there. You know. Yeah, no, that makes sense. I found it actually quite interesting when you mentioned that recruitment has been a little bit more of a challenge as time has gone on for right. some of the different um, armed forces, because in corporate world, it has been such a challenge when it comes to recruitment. So um, what, what do you guys, or what plans or what actions or ideas do you have in order to overcome that? Um, <laughs> it's a tough question. It is a tough question just because, like, the Marine Corps is so dead set on, like, what we are, like, our traditions and stuff like that, that really it just comes down to we got to do what we got to do. Um, there's no, like, plan set in stone as far as, like, us moving forward, like, they haven't talked about lowering the mission requirements or anything like that, you know. So it's more of just, like, Marines never quit, mm -hmm. and we're just going to keep on going on until, you know, we win that that recruitment battle. So, unfortunately, like, there's nothing set in stone as far as, like, what we're going. I think that there's a lot of creative people as far as ideas on how to bring awareness mm -hmm. um, and things to better recruitment efforts, but there's nothing, like, I think that's very savvy that's going to, like, you know, yeah. boost numbers. No silver bullet. <laughs> no, it's just the way. It's just the way the world is right now. And, and at the end of the day, part of it is like you said, awareness, right? So if people have more awareness of what there is or what's going on, mm -hmm. then at that point they'll be able to move move in that direction or have better insight. So when you're trying to make the decision or when you're trying to find the right people who are interested in it, do you have like a specific demographics that you guys target? No. Um, no, I think in, especially in the Marine Corps, like our biggest thing is like, it doesn't matter which walk of life you come from or what your gender, what your race is or anything of that nature. Like if you're up for the challenge, we want you to come. And we try to showcase that a lot, especially in our marketing and the way that we advertise, because we want everyone to see like, there's one person in the Marine Corps, wherever you look, there's going to be one person that's either walked the same walk you've walked or at least similar to it. Um, there's going to be one person who came from where you came from or who looks like you or, mm -hmm. you know, those things. Like, everywhere you look, you're going to find someone who has those similarities with you because you're going <laughs> to you're gonna see the generic, you know, people that join because, like, that's what their family did their entire time. And then you're going to see that one person, you know, like myself. I don't come from money, and I didn't live well as a kid and stuff, but I went into the Marine Corps because I wanted something better for myself. So you'll see that spectrum of things. Um, like, there's people I've met in the Marine Corps who, like, played college baseball, and then they went into the Marine Corps, and you're like, what? <laughs> Couldn't you go to the MLB? And they're like, no. <laughs> so, I don't and know. I guess it's a choice, too, you know? Sometimes people choice. see that they're giving back to the country and doing more to be greater. Yeah. I mean, because there's so many great opportunities. It's funny because, like, the Marine Corps is so big on giving back, even though we're already serving. And it's kind of funny. We're, like, serving the country, but we still want to continue to give back even more so. Um, and, like, we're really big on humanitarian stuff. Like, I've done a few humanitarian efforts and stuff. So, I don't know. It's just 
we're just different, I guess. But no, we don't just strictly look for certain demographics. We want everyone. Okay, well, that's very cool. And I do, I do like how you had mentioned that you were worried you weren't even going to make it past boot camp, and now <laughs> you're, and I would consider it a leadership role with the arm for, with the yeah. Marine Corps, right? Yeah. So to be able to go where someone was like, I'm not even going to make it to be in a leadership role, it's I think it, it instills a lot of. Uh, insight and appreciation to some of the people because they can see hey it's possible and as long as you have you you put forward your hard work and even though you, as an art major which isn't necessarily what some people would anticipate <laughs> someone in the marine corps being but that moves you along and gives you a lot of opportunity so there's opportunity to improve yourself mm -hmm. to have leadership potential to guide others and to be a better person like you said there's a lot of humanity efforts in there so that's awesome yeah. I, i'm assuming the younger demographics have certain things that they're looking for. They mm -hmm. have certain goals and targets um, versus the younger one or versus the older ones or, you know, male versus female versus other. Mm -hmm. They may have different preferences. So how do you kind of help them all feel welcome? Through, like, are you asking, like, how do we recruit to them or how do mm -hmm. we advertise towards them? Uh, oh. I guess both, yeah, because oh. I um, recruit and advertising, for me, it, it is very similar but yeah. you're right one is more public information that you're sharing all over than the other one's like targeted so yeah i think how, just, what would be the approach i think if we're talking on like a recruitment basis i think once you have that rapport with someone you kind of understand like what their wants are um and from there like i think knowing anyone's wants like whether it be like travel and adventure pride of belonging mm -hmm. physical fitness um I think listing all those things, like, you can find something like that in the Marine Corps. Like, there's all these different things that people want, and you can find it in the Marine Corps. Uh, I think it's just a matter of being open to the conversation. Um, but, I mean, when you bring awareness to people and you kind of, like, show those things, I think we try to show the things that this generation that's up and coming, I think the things that they want to do, like, climate control is like very big in this generation. So we like to focus on the things of like the behind the tech that we have mm -hmm. that are better for the environment. And we're trying to step away from the things that aren't so good yeah. or traveling and going and helping other countries that are in need, you know, from earthquakes and things of that nature. I think we try to show them that like, you can still do all these things that are important to you while you're serving in the Marine Corps. They don't have to go away just because you enlisted in the Marine Corps, you know? Yeah, so it's not so much about where you came from or mm -hmm. how you define yourself. It's what you want to do. But what you want to do. Yeah, it's what you want to do for your community. Um, you can serve for four years and you can get out and have all this growth that you've had in the Marine Corps, this maturity and stuff like that, and you can bring that back and make your community better. I mm -hmm. think it's just your perspective on how you want to go about it. That's very good. And that's why a lot of it, I guess, is about asking the right questions to help understand what the different individuals are looking for yeah. versus trying to typecast them in a specific bubble. Exactly, right? yeah. That's very cool. And then you, you mentioned the four years. Is that kind of the, the minimum time it's, frame? It's like the generic. When you first join, uh, depending on what your job is, you um, you go in and you can either do have a four- or five-year contract, but okay. the generic enlistment is four years, yeah. Okay. And then f since you've been here nine years, is it something you renew every year or? Every four. Every four years. Okay. Yeah. So almost like a president. <laughs> president yeah. <laughs> yeah, your four-year term. Feels like it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it. It ages you quick, but you look, I would have said you must have just barely signed up because you, you have a very young look. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing. Um, very cool. So if you were to um, encourage someone or if someone's like, hey, I'm on the cusp, so I'm thinking about it, I'm not sure what to do, what would you kind of tell them? What, where should they go from there? Uh, they can either go to marines.com okay. uh, and they can kind of get some information if they want to read something about it. If they want that face-to-face -face conversation, they just have to find their local recruiter. And then if you don't want to go there, you can always call 1-800-MARINES and talk to somebody over the phone. Okay, so a big part of it is just getting the right support, getting to the right person to guide you there. Because I'm sure there's a lot of people that give the wrong information <laughs> Yes. just because they don't know and they're like, ah, go this route or yeah. whatever. So. But there's a vast amount of information out there, so Google is... Is a good place to start when you want to answer some things as far as finding the right people to contact. Is there any specific movie or something that you could tell people, hey, watch this, you're going to be like, let's join the Marines? <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, no. Oh, my God. I can't think of <laughs> one Marine Corps movie right now besides yeah. documentaries. The, put the pressure. <laughs> What's a good documentary? Oh, the Battle of Marsha is a good okay. one. Okay. <laughs> so that, that would be considered a documentary. That's, like, one of my, like, top top tier, yeah. Just because I, I, know, some of the one, I know some of the people that are in it. So it's just, like, cool to, like, I don't know, see it. As a staff sergeant, clearly you've been doing it for nine years, so... Well, not staff sergeant for nine years, but you've been in, right. in the Marine Corps yeah. for nine years. So there's different levels or different roles mm -hmm. with the Marine Corps, right? Yeah. Can you, Marine Corps, not re, Marine Corps. <laughs> <laughs> so can you help us understand maybe if someone was interested in getting in, what they need to expect? Because some people may just be intimidated. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is to maybe do some research uh, as far as like what your job interests are. Like okay. I was very adamant that I wanted to do something that was somewhat artistic. So originally I was like, oh, I'll do public affairs because it's journalism, I can do some writing here and there. But then I actually found out about Combat Camera. And <clears throat> I will preface this and say that they merged the two and now we're called something else. But okay. um, <laughs> when I went in, I, I really wanted to do that. So when you do take the ASVAB, which is the standardized test that you take before you join, um, when you take it, you're a little confused because it is a lot of engineering, mathematics, there's some grammar in there and stuff. So you kind of don't understand like how you're going to get placed because certain jobs have certain scores you have to have. Mm -hmm. So um, the higher you score, the more job options you have. Um, but there's a lot of like weird jobs that you wouldn't think you have. Like there's um, there's this job called me talk, which is basically you're a weatherman. You, you kind of go study astrology and you mm -hmm. do all these different things. And then you do the weather report every morning. Huh. Um, and it's good because, you, you know, obviously at um, aviation centers or, you know, they need that for, you know, the flights that day and stuff like that. You know, there's ARF, which is air fire rescues. You're basically a firefighter for the airline or it, the flight line. Okay. Um, and like for me, like you had to score uh, a 15 above on the ASVAB and then you could have been placed in graphics, photography and videography. Um, and then you go to school for it. So I think there's just a lot of opportunities and jobs and that you kind of need to research because you don't want to go strictly into infantry, which is what everyone thinks you become right. and stuff <laughs> like that. There's just like so many cool jobs like crew chief and you basically just fly around on an aircraft all the time and stuff like that. I, or what's another one? There's a, another one called like CB and they basically build like flight lines and they do construction for the Marine Corps. Um, and there's two sides of that. Like there's the kind of explosive side, but then there's the other side where you're just constructing things and building stuff. So, wow. yeah, I, I didn't realize it was that broad because you're absolutely right. Most people just think, oh, you get in the infantry and you get yeah. a gun and you shoot. And yeah. Then. Everyone thinks like, oh, if you're an officer, you're just going to be a pilot. And then if you're, you know, enlisted, you're just yeah. going to become uh, an infantryman. And it's just not like that at all. Like there's some really cool tech jobs, too, that you can do if you're like really into computers and stuff like that so hmm. yeah I think just researching like that's what I did I just researched certain jobs that I wanted to do and what can you do to prepare for that test in order to score higher there are many many books and places okay. on the internet that you can help study for it's actually really hard I thought I failed it when I took it but <laughs> I, I scored like a 68 and I was like I don't know how I did that I thought I was gonna get like a 32 you joined and you said you almost were gonna fail do you feel that your lack of confidence might I say of progressing or passing certain tests, et cetera, was it, do you feel it was at all attributed to it being, because I know a lot of people say Marine Corps is uh, male dominated. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you felt that may have led to any of your lack of confidence. No, no. I mean, I was just like nervous as all nervous. get out. Yeah, but Which is normal. I mean, the Marine Corps is very male dominated. I mean, statistically speaking, uh, women only make up roughly around eight to 10% of the Marine Corps. That's that little. Wow. Yeah. Uh, there's not a lot of us. But honestly, I think that that makes us even better. Mm -hmm. I mean, because we're one of we're 1% of the women in the United States who are willing to take on the challenge of being a Marine. Um, and not everyone can say that. And so like, that's amazing within itself. The Marine Corps has come a long way. Even since I joined, it's come a long way. Um, and I have never in my career encountered a leader who's put me down because I'm a woman, who hasn't given me a role um, uh, in leadership because I'm a woman, or I've never had Marines not entrust in me because I'm a woman. Um, I think that if you do what you're supposed to do and you're physically capable of being in the standards of what the Marine Corps asks of you, mm -hmm. then you're set. I think that a lot of times um, people get in their heads that like, oh, like these people are going to judge me because I can only do this or because I'm a woman, they're going to put me down. It's really not like that. Like my husband's a Marine. Um, 
and he has females who work with him and he's part of a ground unit and like he talks to me all the time about how he should go about certain things like that so I think you get that a lot of like men who are in the Marine Corps and they want to be a good leader and a good peer to the females and then what would you say is your mission with the United States Marine Corps mine or the Marine Corps or just Bo in general? Both, both, because I guess depending on what role you're serving, yeah, it makes sense. So maybe we can start with the Marine Corps as a whole. What would uh, be their mission? Marine Corps' mission is to make Marines, win our nation's battles, uh, and return quality citizens. Those are the three things that we consider our mission statement. And then as far as like my mission, I guess, as a Marine is just like providing awareness to people. Um, I think... There's just a lot of controversy out there about the military and stuff like that. You know, we're we're not what people present we like present us as. I think a lot of the time, and I think no matter what your beliefs are, political, religious, whatever, like you have a place in the Marine Corps, and it's not necessarily what people paint you or like paint us as. Mm -hmm. So I like bringing awareness to that because I am proud to be a Marine. Um, it's badass. So <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. And that's sometimes what people need to feel, they need to see, and you only get that when you talk to somebody who's actually been there. Yeah, right? it's just that, that pride. It doesn't go away. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Well, thank you again, everybody, for joining us today on the Happy Customer Channel. Once again, I'm Giacomo Puccini, and thank you so much for Sarah Ralph joining us. And that's it for our episode today. Thanks again, Sarah Ralph, for joining us today. And of course, if you guys enjoyed what you learned or what you saw today, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you next week.